Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Recently, I made a video on the AIOC or the all-in-one cable. It was titled, Your Baofeng Programming Cable Sucks, and odds are, it still does suck. But today, I wanted to showcase this a little bit more. And the reason I wanted to showcase it was two reasons. Number one, I do believe that this will be the perfect project for a ham radio club. This incorporates things like learning how to program one of these devices or install the firmware, learning how to solder, and then being able to utilize APRS as well as how to program a radio with chirp. So there's something there for every skill level. And also, I recently purchased about 30 of these and sent them out to some people. So I wanna show what you might expect and what you might need to do when you get one. So let's go to the bench and talk about it here. This is the AIOC, and just to really briefly summarize, I'll leave a link below to the original video as well as the GitHub link. Uh, this is an open source project, which actually means that there could be future development by anybody, and it's all available on that GitHub. Now, there's two ways to go about buying this. Currently, you can go to GitHub. You could download all the bill of materials and all the files, upload them to JLC PCB, and then you could order the boards, and they'll arrive like this. One word of caution, though, when I ordered the boards, this little part right here was out of stock, so I had to order it custom from Mauser and then send these parts to JLC PCB, who had to wait until this part arrived. So the other way was to purchase this on my shop, which I was selling these at the cost of the product, to help support the project. And uh, currently, I don't think I have any left, but we could do another build in the future or another purchase in the future if needed. So with all that out of the way, when you get this, if you didn't purchase it from me, you're going to need to program this microprocessor on here. And uh, I could show you how to do that in just a moment, but you're also going to need to do one more thing. You're going to need to install the TRS jacks on here for your programming cable. And so for that, the list or the website where to get them are on the GitHub page, but that's for a European uh, website. So that might take a little bit longer. Uh, additionally, though, these were kind of talked about in the issue section of the GitHub page where you could use these from Amazon. I'll post an affiliate link below and you should be able to substitute these for the ones from Europe. So let me just go ahead and unscrew both of these and we'll take it from there. Now, this actually comes into the next issue. OK, if I'm holding this with something and I'm trying to solder these on, I need to be very precise for a couple of reasons. When you solder these on, they have to be the correct uh, length or distance from each other, not bend fairly straight, but also they also need to be the correct width from each other, or basically, you know, one needs to be ingressed a little bit more than the other. And how do you accomplish that? There are two ways to accomplish it. One, you could find an old beater radio that you're okay with possibly being destroyed if you cook it somehow, and you can plug both of those in here and here. Then you could solder this on, or this one here on, and you should be all right. But that's kind of a pain. So what I did is, is if you ordered it from me this last time around, I went ahead and I printed up the, we'll call this the TRS guide from the GitHub repository from the project. And this makes things a lot easier. Why? Because, well, you would just go ahead and you put in your TRS adapters, and they're only going to go really one way. You know, the, the big one in the big spot, the little one in the little spot. And we're going to have our, what I'm calling our ground pad. And we're going to have it facing down like that. Ground sleeve. There we go. So even, we'll let that focus there. Even with those in all the way, you could see that these are kind of long, these sleeves for the ground. And so what I do is I cut them slightly above that circle here, just like this. Okay, so now the theory is I should be able to put the board into place. And the board is only going to go one way. Now, there are tabs on here. You can see my tabs. I've used this a couple of times, so they've popped off. But there are tabs on here as a guide, and they should click into place with the circles on the board or with the holes on the board. And basically, at that point, you're just going to line everything up. And roughly, this is where I have everything at the moment. Now, I could bend these 
uh, as you can see again my tabs broke off but it's still not bad i can still use this as a guide it shouldn't be a problem but i do have these tabs in a spot where i could bend them flat like you see this middle one right here um, before I solder everything on. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to solder everything into place, okay? So give me just a minute, and I'll be right back. All right, as the soldering iron is just about warmed up, I did want to also thank uh, Longer, Longer 3D Printing Company, because they sent me a 3D printer, which basically allowed me to be able to print all these. Now, the episode's not sponsored by them. The printer was sent to me by uh, them for a review, which I'll have at a later date. But uh, with them sending me the printer, it really helped out with this project. Basically trying to get these on the pad and I'm making sure that these solder points don't bridge each other or connect to each other by any means. We basically want to keep the solder on the pads. And those are all on and I believe that they're secure enough for now. All right, my camera died, so that's fine. It wasn't focusing well anyway. But uh, now I went ahead and I soldered all everything on the back and you know on the front as well. Now that I have the TRSs uh, soldered, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this out, and we're going to notice that it's a lot straighter than it would have been if I would have freehanded it. And in fact, I, I, it worked, but my freehanding abilities weren't that good with the TRS jacks. So if you purchase this from me and that group buy. Now you could just plug in a USB-C, plug in your, your APRS droid, your, your Android phone, or you know plug this into a computer and program on Chirp. Everything should be fine. But the reason I want to show you how to install firmware on here is there's always new firmware uh, coming available. Today, or actually yesterday, <laughs> there was a new firmware available too. So uh, I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it into a USB-C, which is plugged into my computer. But first, if I'm programming a new firmware, I'm gonna take a small piece of wire and I'm gonna put it in the two outer pins if I could, there we go. And you should be able to see, I know it's really difficult, but there's two outer pins I have shorted with this little jumper here. Now when I plug it into the USB-C uh, and then into the computer, we should be able to upload the firmware. Here we are on the GitHub page for the AIOC project, and there's a bunch of stuff here, okay, but what you could actually follow the guide if you have any questions that I don't answer. It's most likely in here. Uh, there's an issue tab as well, so you can click on issues and you can learn about issues, everything. But if we're looking to upgrade the firmware, on the right-hand side of the screen, we'll see this releases icon, and if we click on it, we'll see that there was a release yesterday at the time of recording, and it added new features like the CM108 style PTT, uh, live automatic DFU updates, and a couple other things as well. One of the things I want to point out that this has the emulation of CM108. That doesn't necessarily mean anything quite yet, but I think what they're trying to do is work it to, to be compatible with All-Star. Uh, I think the All-Star node actually reads the hardware ID for the CM108, so there might be some issues there. However, I'm not sure. So I'll be really excited to see the further development of the CM108 support. But now that you know that, uh, you're going to click on that AIOC FW bin 1.2.0 and download it. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download the DFU utilities. And that will be on the main page of the GitHub. If you page down here, there's information uh, regarding the DF utilities, okay? So what you're going to do is after you download that, you're going to open up DF Utilities in a command prompt. I'm not going to go into a detail about where to download the drivers. I'll leave links below, and I'm not going to go into extreme detail on how to install every piece of software. I think you could pretty much figure it out. But a couple of notes. The first note that I want to make is when I downloaded DF Util, I put it in my C drive. And so that's why you see DF Util dot uh, exe dot exe here now you might not need the d or dot exe dot exe but i did um, then this command which is on the github page i just type it in finally the last thing you need in this whole sequence is the firmware file uh, i have my firmware downloaded to my downloads folder and that's why you see c users as collect downloads okay again ensuring that the aioc is plugged in and that we have that jumper installed in the correct spot we're going to now go ahead and hit enter. And when we hit enter, we should see it actually doing some work, okay? It says no DFU capable device available. So one more time, I'm just going to go ahead and try it again. Uh, and then there we go. 
So now it's writing all the firmware to the actual, actual microprocessor or to the chip that's on the board. And it says that it's downloaded successfully. At this point, we can go ahead and unplug our USB-C and we could unscrew or untake off that jumper cable, if you will. My AIOC is now unplugged. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug it into the USB-C and in the device manager, which I have here showing, we should see something show up under COM ports, okay? So ports, COM, and if we go down, we see USB serial device, COM19. So anyway, I know that I'm on COM19, and so what I'm gonna do to make sure this all works is I'm gonna go into Chirp, and I'm gonna go radio, download from radio, and once that thing pops up that says, what's your port, I'm gonna select COM port 19 and uh, the Baofeng UV5R. Okay, and this is a Baofeng UV16R, which is essentially the same radio. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this in now, and I'm going to click OK. We're going to get that warning. It says turn off radio, connect it, turn the volume on to 100%, and then click OK. And it's cloning, so I know that I did a good job or uh, an OK enough job on my soldering. Um, and then I, of course, know that the firmware uploading was successful as well. And just for the sake of it, I can go ahead and I could try to re-upload this code plug just to make sure that it's sending data just as easily. So I click upload and wait. There we go. It wrote that to the radio. So that's great. I know that uh, this is reading and writing fine. The AIOC works. All right, let's recap. But first, congratulations, you did it. And uh, I hope you had a good time with that too, because this has been a fun project. While I recap, though, I want to, again, look at the mindset of a club, okay? Let's say I have 10 members in a club, and maybe I have a really good, strong, computer-savvy person. Maybe he's the guy who uploads all the firmware to the AIOC chips, right? And then after all the firmware's upgraded, you know, the other nine guys, or all 10 of you, start going to town soldering in those six solder points, which shouldn't take more than 10 or 15 minutes. And maybe if you have a new person, you guide them and it's a little bit longer. Uh, and then at that point, you know, then you plug it in and see on your computers or how many other computers you have, can you program the radio? Does APRS Droid work with your phone? And as development occurs, you know, more and more features added, could you use those features? And how would you use them as a club to make your club more productive? For example, okay, now we all have a programming cable and we're all here. What would our uh, tactical or our frequency channels for our club be? Let's go ahead and program them in there. See where this goes. It, it actually is a very inexpensive item that gives a lot of, uh, a lot of potential for individuals or for clubs. So with that, I also didn't show the STM32 Cube software, which as I'm understanding it, allows you to modify or build your own firmware for this device. And then you could submit it to GitHub and you can contribute to the whole project in general. But I think that this kind of gives you a better idea why this cable is cool. Again, it works for APRS. It, uh, it gives you the ability to program uh, the radio. Uh, there's many radios that we don't know are or are not supported yet. So I would encourage you to go to the GitHub if you have a radio that's working and maybe leave a note there saying, yeah, hey, this radio works fine. Or even in the comments below. But I hope you had a good time. I appreciate the opportunity to kind of help be a part of this project, if you will. It was fun. So until next time, and I have something coming up here that you might enjoy, another one of these group buy things. Uh, until next time, though, thanks for watching the channel. I hope you have a good one. This is Ham Radio, dude. Happy spring, finally.